Hi, I'm Richard. Welcome to my tutorials. And in part 1A, what we'll be doing is getting ourselves warmed up by modelling the base, which is the bottom part of these turrets here. We'll keep them consistent for all the turrets, and actually, what we'll actually do is keep everything in the same file, the, the, the base, the stand, and each of the individual guns, so that we can keep things consistent. But in order to get warmed up, like I say, let's get started and create the base. Now the first thing I like to do, just to uh, clarify a few things, is I like to remove the um, timeline, the animation window, whatever that's called. I never use that, <coughs> so not for the modelling anyway. I also like to remove the uh, uh, unselect the 3D manipulator. You're welcome to keep that on. I just don't like it; it gets in the way. Uh, I do keep the uh, camera and light there for reasons I'm not sure of. It just uh, they don't bother me too much. Right, so I'm going to have to uh, try as hard as I can to tell you which buttons I'm clicking because apparently the key logging tool in Blender is now no longer working and I couldn't find one that's consistently working the way I like so we'll just have to bear with me hopefully you'll uh, you'll have enough Blender knowledge to to follow along but please if, if I'm not making anything clear let me know uh, the cube itself that comes with Blender is, is two by two units two uh, two Blender units by two Blender units and what I'm going to do for, for this uh, for this game is I'm going to make everything uh, one meter by one meter and then a varying varying heights but so one meter by one meter wide and long so I'll just scale this uh, to 0.5 okay and that makes everything as you can see dimensions one by one by one um, and I will also scale on the z-axis I think to 0.2 there we go okay and you can see that the scaling is all out now so I'll just quickly just press control a rotation and scale and then just grab that on the Z GZ 0.1 okay so we've got ourselves a uh, <coughs> a very basic looking base but we want to tidy this up and make it look kind of groovy and cool so let's do that uh, the way I do this is I'm going to go into uh, edit mode tab uh, press control R and create a, uh, a, a edge loop along the Y axis I just left click and then right click to cancel movement so it's bang on the center I'll do control R on the X axis again left click right click to cancel so it's bang on if I just pop on to the top view uh, to go to top view perspective if I press the numpad 5 then it goes to top view orthographic so I press numpad 7 to go to top view and then numpad 5 to go to orthographic orthographic keeps everything very flat so everything that's further away will actually be <coughs> the same size uh, which is handy when you do trying to do stuff for, uh, for scaling and perspective so I'm just going to click A to unselect everything go Z into uh, wireframe mode and then C to circle select and I'll just select all of those edges there right click X vertices and those of you that uh, know how I do things immediately I'll be doing add modifier uh, mirror along the X and the Y and I'll also enable clipping on the options there okay if I click Z you can see now that we have our that cube back with the difference being now that if I grab one of these vertices you see it'll affect all of all four of them which is exactly what we want so let's try and tidy this up and make it a little look a little bit cooler. And the way I've been doing this is I've been creating a couple of edge loops uh, along the y-axis. Again, left click and right click to cancel, uh, and then a couple of edge loops along the sorry that was the x-axis, wasn't it? This is the y-axis. Um, and if you just move the mouse wheel up one, you see, and you can keep moving it up. But I only want two of them, so I go down again, left click, and then right click to cancel. Uh, alt right click to grab one of the uh, ones along the y axis in this case and I'll just grab it G X and I'll just move it back in and I think I do minus 0 0.1 125 no minus minus 0 0.1 okay and I'll do the same on this one here I'll just grab that but now on the Y it's positive now 0 0.1 okay I'm keeping them consistent uh, control tab to, to uh, vertex mesh select mode so I want face now I'm just going to grab that face there G Y and then just pull it to a distance that you like and just keep an eye on the bottom field I'm pointing at it which obviously you can't see but I'm thinking 0 0.05 looks good yes left click to select and do the same with this X so G X probably minus yes minus 0 0.05 okay it's a good start isn't it um, let's bevel this corner here so if I just control 2 and then edge select you can go down here by the way I, I, this is, I always use control tab for the mesh select mode <coughs> I like um, uh, select edge in fact you can do control tab and then press a number 1 2 or 3 so you just control t uh, control tab 2 would, would do it um, or like I say you can use the mesh select tool down the bottom I use I use the control tab though and we'll just right click this edge here press control B 
and as you can see we can start pulling actually before I do let's go to the top view and then do control B and take a look and find something we about there I like that <clears throat> all that remains now I think is just to put a bevel at the top so I'll just do alt right click alt shift right click and alt shift right click there uh, again control B just put it down to you find a size that you like. You can go crazy, you can go right down, right? I've had to, oh, if they cross over if you go too far, don't go that far then. So, something like that. Okay, it's entirely up to you. Just press A, pop into um, object mode. Just realise something, let's quickly just go Control 7 to go to the bottom view. Control Tab 3, make sure uh, nothing's selected. I'm just going to press C circle. I'm going to select all those faces, X faces. So I'm deleting the underside because I don't think we'll ever see that. And we can save ourselves some verts uh, and indeed make it li life easier to, to texture as well. Um, so what I will do now is I want to add a circle in the middle. If I just spin, spin us back to that picture, um, you can see that the um, the base has got, uh, let's actually give you the right picture, always helps. Um, the base has got like a, a sort of a, a dent in it, a, a Pivot, pivot, divot. You know what I mean. A dent, drop in it, a circular drop. <laughs> so let's uh, let's put that in there. The way I've been doing this is I've been selecting these faces here and just deleting them. X faces, okay, uh, and that gives us a few faces to work with to create a circle. And I can just quickly Control Tab one. I can tell you I've got one, two, three, four times four. So I've got sixteen verts. So what I can do, just press uh, go into object mode, Shift A. Uh, shift S, excuse me, cursor to center, it already was. Uh, I'm in object mode, Shift A, mesh, circle. It's very big, but the most important thing is we need to change it down to 16. Okay, which was the size we saw a minute ago. Let's go to the top view, uh, Z, Let's scale it down. It's not part of the same object, by the way. And I'll just scale it so it's just a nudge bigger than that square we've created like that and I'll just go to front view and grab it on the Z and just pull it up. We're using it as a template and I'll show you why it's rather cool. And again the mirror modifier is brilliant for this as well. Save us loads of time. Press Z to go back into um ob uh, uh, object objects what's it what's it called? Solid view. Um and then we'll go back to the uh base we've created and click, click tab into edit mode. Alright so what I want to do is want to um move these uh, verts here to match this kind of circle. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to enable the uh, snapping tool. Uh, you can do shift tab or you can click on the tab on the magnet tool down the bottom there and we want to snap it to vertex. Now if I was to just go to top view and just do just say grab this one, grab on the just grab it and just move it there, what it will do is it will kind of pull it up to that square circle. We don't want that. We can do something rather cool here. If we just do grab and then do shift Z it will it will not go up and down now, it'll only move on the X and Y. So we can move it over to there, left click, and you can see that it's moved here. So let's just quickly do that again with U, G, Shift Z, so it doesn't move on the Z. G, Shift Z, it looks like it's already there. A G, Shift Z, pop it there, and finally this one, G, Shift Z, We've got ourselves a circle, and now we go back to that into object mode. X delete. If I was honest with you, I think that's a nudge too big, and we don't need to panic because we can uh, scale it in a bit. But to scale it in, if we scale it in now, let me just, show, uh, just quickly to turn off snapping. Uh, if I scale it in, it will scale it in the weird way. We want to scale it in the circular way, and that is because we're in mirror mode. It's kind of I think it's scaling to a point, sort of <laughs> halfway between the center and the actual uh, crescent. So the way we can fix this is just if we make sure the cursor is in the center, uh, and then just uh, pivot point 3D cursor. Now if we scale, it should uh, shift Z, uh, so it doesn't go up and down. So it doesn't go down, yeah, up and down. And then we can just pull it in, maybe that much. That looks good. And because we are in, uh, we've chosen that pivot point now. We can extrude E, S, and again we can scale in because. Um, and it doesn't matter that it goes down a bit now because we're going to want that to go down. Pick a pick a size that you like. There you go. Just you know, you can go that crazy. It doesn't look right, does it? About there, maybe. Let's go front view. G Z. No, Z. G Z. And just maybe pick it so it's about the same depth as that bevel there. It doesn't actually matter. Okay. It looks a little bit chunky, and we can fix this by marking these edges as smooth. Control Tab Three. 
yeah, I'll just select them all. I could have gone an alt right click, but I'm not going to be bothered. If I just go over shading UVs and click faces smooth, and then I'll go over to auto uh, to the uh, uh, object data, data object data, and just click auto smooth, and that looks a lot better. And what I'll also do is so if I just grab these guys, I don't think it matters. I'm just going to mark these as sharp. I don't make any difference whatsoever. It's worth doing though. So let's just finish off by uh, filling in this hole here. And the way I'll do that is uh, make sure clipping is enabled. It is. Control that brought me back into vertex mode, and I'll just I've just clicked uh, the top one. E X pull it into the middle. Go that one. E X pull it into the middle, and then E X pull it into the middle. And then what I'll do is I'll just oh, just for speed I'll just do this. Select those four. Press F. Select those four. Press F and then those four. Press F. Okay, and there you go. You've got yourself, I think, a pretty handy base. And if we look at the size of it, it's 121 verts. This is very good. All that remains now is to unwrap it. So what I've been doing, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Let me just quickly, sh let me save it. Let's save it. I've been, let me overwrite turrets all dot blend. Uh, do that again. Hang on, just in case you didn't see me do that. File save as turrets all dot blend. Save as Blender file. It's kicked up for it because it was already there. That's fine. Um, and I'll apply this mirror modifier. Okay, there we go. And if I just drag and pull out the bottom left hand corner, just select over here, UV images. Uh, I did I should have marked the seams before I unwrapped it, before I applied the mirror modifier, not to worry. Let's just go through and just select these corner ones here. Okay. Just shift right clicking my way. Control E, mark seam. And if I just unwrap that now, it actually takes up a very good proportion of the of the image that we would we would create. But if I just show you, if I just press N and then click on the stretch option here, I'll press shift to uh, oh I'll press shift if you move the mouse over the, the window that you're interested in, press shift space, it'll maximize it. We can zoom in. This light blue here means there's some stretching going on. And we can tweak around with this quite a bit. Um but to be honest with you um, we can stick with this. In fact, I did actually for the first go. I stuck with this. Um, I wanted something a little straighter. You can go through and, like I say, you can select an, uh, an edge like that and press W, align X. But you can see by doing that, it's uh, made more stretching. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen the file so it's not going to save anything. I'm actually going to add an edge here. Okay, and I'm just going to do Control Tab and then that one and that one. Control E, mark seam like so. Okay, so, and I'll tab out and I will apply that. Okay, and now if we, oh, I've lost the window because I've reloaded it. So let's drag that across. UV image editor, a U unwrap. And again, I'll probably press N, stretch. The top bit's fine, but this bit's gone wrong because I need to add some seams here. So let's just add one there, say. One there, one there, and one there. So they're equally spaced apart. That's better. Can you see? By adding those seams there, it's giving a little bit of relief. It's not. You can probably see. You can. You don't have to have those. Um, you know, if you if you don't want seams, you're prepared to live with a bit of stretching. Then, by all means, go ahead. Uh, let's just let's see what. Just for just for laughs, let's just get rid of them and see how bad it is. <coughs> control, control E, clear seam, U, unwrap. You see, it's not that much worse, is it? <laughs> you know, I don't know. For now, I'm going to keep the seams in. Okay, U, unwrap. Okay. Let's try and uh, use some more of the space as well. So I'll just press Shift Space when I'm over there to maximise the window. Uh, select a few of these. I'm guessing there's four of them. So if I just select, oh, press C to select, something like that, and then Control L to select those two boxes. G R ninety, and then grab that and put that over there. Just create a little bit of space, like so. And then I press A to unselect, and then just grab those ones. Them in like 
like so, and then I think if you just do A and scale it out, <coughs> go a bit bigger. Okay, maybe two bit, no, just about squeeze in, isn't it? Oh, G on the X. What we can do actually is just move that across there. G Y, just move it up. That looks fine to me. I mean, we, we could squeeze more out if we wanted to. I don't know that we need to go too mad here. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. But you, if you wanted to, you could just scale it out just a nudge more. And then just grab that. And I guess you could select those. Just press Control L to select all. Then G, X. Just pull them in a bit. G, X. Drag across. There you go. There you go. Okay. I press Shift Space to exit to full screen mode. Um, tab out here, just press Control S to save everything and let's just rename that to base and we're done uh, we will uh, now move on in the next part to modelling the uh, stand let's just have a quick look at that let's, um, oh, that one, this one here, yeah we'll model the stand here okay, um, that'll be part 1B uh, we don't have to model a circular stand, uh, a cylinder stand we might even model a, a flatter one depending on our um, a vert count for the game. So I look forward to seeing you next part. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll be sure to get the video out soon. Thank you. Bye bye.